I'm Stephanie, and this is Synodum of the Day. It's kind of rainy outside, and I haven't taken the time to dig through the next tub of Synodums, so I thought I'd show you the display case where we keep the figural Synodums. It's a used um, or decommissioned science cabinet, and there's a lot of dumbs crammed in here. The top shelf is an army of Santa Clauses and a couple snowmen. The next shelf and the ones below it are just things that made their way in here. On the bottom shelf, you'll see one that is unusual for the collection in that it's glass. Um, and we found it one year when we were out at the Salvation Army Christmas sales. In Omaha, at least, for at least a decade, the Salvation Armies would kind of hoard or hold back all of their Christmas items during the year. And then on a particular Saturday, and usually I think the first one in December, they'd put out tables and they'd bag up all of the Christmas stuff in clear plastic bags on tables. And then when they unlocked the front door, there'd be a rush of people, including us, um, off to look for treasure in those bags. Well, that year we found this glass dome because by Salvation Army terms, anything that's a snow dome is obviously Christmas. And the building inside of it looked kind of familiar, but not in a Christmas kind of way. And that's when we realized it was a snow dome from the Omaha's uh, Children's Theater, the Rose Theater. So that was kind of fun. And it gets to live in the case, even though it's not plastic. Well, I'm thinking about this snow dome case and how when you have 3,500 snow domes, they don't all get to live in the case. The figurals tend to be um, a little bit more fragile because they could break easier. Raggedy Ann's head might snap off. You might lose Pinocchio's nose along the way. Sometimes you've got seashells or other bits on them. So part of what we do is we protect them in the case. Um, so I've been thinking about how we protect one another, and one of the things I'm thinking about is I'm hoping that you all will pray, um, especially in these next weeks for pastors. We're holding a lot of information in our heads and in our hearts, trying to figure out how to work with our church leaders on how and when we open our buildings back up for worship. Some of our buildings are already partly open. So for instance, St. Paul Benson is closed for visitors, but it's open for our child development center, which could end up having about 90 kids in it by the time we get to June 1st. So there's a lot to weigh when we think about how the building's being used, who's in the building, who's outside of the building. In addition, there's some really horrifying articles out there about the dangers of things like singing in a group praying out loud in a group and of course what we know about the dangers of proximity so we're trying to figure out how we can gather people together for worship knowing that people's memory of worship is very different than what the reality of a new form of worship will likely be um, so in the midst of that i think about how we protect one another Sometimes we protect one another by not sharing all of the horrifying things at once, kind of doling them out bit by bit so we don't lose one another in a torrent of grief. But we also protect one another by sharing information and making wise decisions even though we know that it might make somebody really sad for a while. The truth is that we are living in a pandemic and it doesn't seem to be going away quickly because that's not what happens with a pandemic. It's difficult. There's not a case that I can put around each one of us to protect us from it. So we move forward in faith, trying to be as wise as possible, remembering Wesley's advice to do no harm, to try to remember that God is with us even when we do things in a new way. I know I generally hate anything that's new, although also once the thing isn't new, I often like it or at least adapt fairly well. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will be with us as we do things in new ways and that even if worship in a new way isn't what we recollect, um, this Holy Spirit will still be with us 
guiding us, advocating for us, helping us remember that even if the form of worship changes for a time, God's love does not change. The power of the resurrection does not change. The biblical stories that serve as a guide do not change. Um, for that, I give thanks. And I, I know I covet your prayers, as do pastors and leaders of churches everywhere. Um, and together and with God's help, we will figure out what our next steps are and how it is that we can do our best work together. I give thanks for that opportunity. Amen.